Hey folks, how are we all doing? Uh, Brendan from Blue Light here. Um, just coming to you live, whilst it's all fresh in my head, to just uh, share with you some learning that came from one of my one-to-ones this morning. And um, it was a couple of hours ago. I would have gone live before, but I had to have my chiropractor um, appointment. Had to go for that. And for those of you who have been asking me how my back's going and how the pain in my arm is going, uh, thank you for asking me. Uh, for those, it's these people who are on the weekly workshops I run for serving officers and those who are on my webinars um, on a regular basis, you'll know that on some evenings I've been in excruciating pain and once or twice full of so much <laughs> codeine that um, I probably would have been arrested if I was driving a car. Um, so I've got to say the chiropractor is doing some amazing work and I feel so much better today and uh, on the road to recovery. So thank you everyone for asking. So that's where I'm walking back from now, a chiropractor meeting. Um, I hope you're all well and uh, that you're going to get something out of this very short Facebook Live. Uh, so first of all, quick shout outs to Gemma Liv, Louise J who are watching at this moment in time. Awesome to have you on board. Uh, where are we, you might ask? Well, just walking back from the centre of York, where the chiropractors are, um, into Little Hobmore, uh, which uh, many of you know is my favourite haunt for walking our little doggy. Well, I've not got the doggy with me today, but I'm going to take you on a little stroll through Hobmore and at the same time explain to you why people is so important. So, uh, one-to-one -one this morning was with a client who's uh, going to be a rejoiner. Um, he's been in the police already for a few years. It was his absolute dream to join the police. And he got in and he had to leave because of his caring responsibilities, which, you know, good for him, putting family first. And now he wants to get back into the police. He's already been for an interview and his feedback. Well, actually, by the time we got to halfway through the feedback, I can predict what the feedback was for every one of the questions he answered and because one of the things he wasn't doing was including people he's given loads of examples of how he'd done some pr pretty awesome you know okay policing in the past he'd been to an RTC dealt with that uh, thieves on burglar got the burglar uh, someone driving a HGV erratically um, got the person who was drink driving um, something else that was uh, unremarkable that was just following policy, following procedure, and stuff he dealt with himself. One answer scored really well, and this was when they were looking at emotional awareness, and he gave an answer about how he dealt with someone who'd um, deliberately jumped off um, a patio, um, not a patio, what do you call it, a veranda, on a high rise, and uh, was still alive when he got there, uh, but then sadly died, uh, it was fatal by the time he got to hospital. And he talked about dealing with that and his feelings and emotions and all of the people who attended and all of the people involved in the family. And that was the one that scored highly because you can't apply the national decision model to it. You can't apply policy to it. What was missing with all the others is people. So in that answer, he talked about people, both him, his colleagues, family, very difficult the paramedics and there's no right answer you can't use the NDM for that this is where you show your true worth and your true self the real authentic self in your interview it scored really well and the feedback from the chief inspector apparently was this is gonna be a good interview this is the first question it's gonna be a good interview very promising and then it all went downhill the last question they actually said to him pick another example because that one's just not doing it and at that point, he knew it was a train wreck. So what he's got to do now is come up with a more compelling story about why, why he wants to rejoin the police. Because he gave me his first account, and quite honestly, it felt like he was telling me about how he goes to the shops to buy a pint of milk. It just didn't have anything in it that enthused me. I said, all right, okay, so tell me the reason, real reason why he wants to join the police. And he told me, and it was awesome. <laughs> and it got me. He should have said that in the first place. But instead, he said what he thought the interviewers want to hear. They don't. They want to hear about your journey, your authentic and emotional self. How on his last day in the police, he walked out in tears, thinking, what have I done? That's something, isn't it? That's reaching from your heart and talking about something that's very personal to you. 
you'll notice I'm not talking about the force or the individual or anything. You can't identify the individual from this. Um, but it just inspired me, this session, to share the learning with you so that you can learn from this as well. It's so important that we capture our unique individual story. When we're talking about why, why me, why you and why now? Um, and at the same time, all his other answers. So he's, he's, he's given, been given some homework now, if you like. The homework is go away and come up with examples where policy didn't really apply, where you can't NDM it, national decision model it, where you can give some examples of outside the police service because this individual has been working outside of the police service since he left last year. He wants to get back in. He wants to come back in as one of our brothers. And he is a brother because he's been in the police. Once you're in the police, there's always part of you that's police. Always. I know. I served for 28 years. Um, and I was reminded of um, uh, my early days as a temporary inspector, the first time I donned the pips. A scary time, by the way. I've been a sergeant for several years, comfortable in my rank, comfortable in my role. And suddenly I've got these pips on my shoulder. And for one week, oh my goodness, that was hard work. That was hard work. Um, problems, problems, problems. And I remember the chief, uh, the superintendent coming in saying, how's it going, Brendan? And I went, oh, God, boss, you wouldn't believe it. And he said, I probably would. Come into my office. And I said, yeah, but there's people who want to see me for, eh, they can wait. You're the inspector. They can wait. They'll wait for you. I'm not going anywhere. And he said, so tell me about this week. And I told him, blah, 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 all about this stuff. And I said, you know, if it wasn't for people, if it wasn't for all the people involved, it'd be easy being an inspector. And he, I remember him leaning across the desk and going, Brendan, it's always been about people and always will be. Take care of that and the rest of your job will be easy. It's all about the people, folks. So make sure you involve lots of different people and characters in your answers, the ones that don't agree with you, the ones that are difficult to manage, the ones that are difficult to help, where it didn't always work out. The national decision model won't help you with everything. There needs to be a certain something, a certain magic that's going to make them think, I can really see this person working on my team at three o'clock in the morning when it's all going pear-shaped. So hopefully, folks, that's really been helpful for you. Um, let's do a few shout outs before I go and if anyone's got any questions please do shout them out. Ben's saying passed my senior interview yesterday with Ethic, Essex now onto vetting thanks for all your help. Ben that's awesome news I love to hear from people who have succeeded please do let me know share the love in the Facebook group the Facebook group's got over 16,000 on for 17,000 people now so share it in the group I'll put a link in the comments below. Um, and uh, I'd love it if you could just share some of that love on Trustpilot as well. That'd be amazing. Uh, Babania is watching. Anna, how are you? How are you, Anna? Uh, Kay Marie, uh, David, Kane, uh, Samuel, David, Valentina. Valentina, you've had good news as well. Uh, well done you. Well done you. Um, Bethany and Kane is saying, um, Hi, I'm going to do my second year in college, then wish to join the police force for your apprenticeship. Can you give me like a bullet point list of what my next steps look like? I absolutely can, Kenny. Join the Facebook group. Um, if you, if it's not in the link below, uh, search for Blue Light and groups, Facebook groups, uh, Blue Light Police Recruitment, ask to join that group. And very soon, it's almost like it's the perfect question this, because what I'm going to be doing this afternoon is I'm going to be writing more chapters of the book that's going to come out soon, how to become a police officer, even when you have no idea where to start with your preparation. So this book would be perfect for you, Kaney. You might be thinking, I can't wait months for it. Don't worry, it's gonna be out in weeks. It's gonna be out in weeks. And it's gonna be just £4.99. £4.99, how does that sound? It's gonna tell you everything you need to do right from the very beginning, all the way to the end of the process. It'd be better than bullet points. Um, anyway, on that note, folks, I shall catch you with you soon. Oh, little doggy's come to join me. Look at that, hello, it's Reggie. Reggie's thinking, Reggie's looking at me like that, thinking, where's Summer? Reggie always likes to try and play with Summer, but Summer's not here. That's actually Summer's ball, I think. Is that Summer's ball? No, it's not, it's Reggie's ball. Go on, there's your ball, Reggie. Summer lost a ball this morning. <laughs> anyway, Kenny's saying the book sounds great, thank you. All right, for Louise who's just joining us, I'm just about to go now. In case any of you are thinking, where's this beautiful place? So blessed to live in sunny York. 
Uh, there's this little hob moor, my favourite little glen, it's where I walk the doggy. Um, no doggy today, because like I said, I'm coming back from the chiropractor meeting. Uh, my appointment with the chiropractor. If anyone's wondering about chiropractors, they are awesome, honestly. So I'm just walking uh, through a little passage now that'll take me to the Mayfield Trust and then all the way back home. All right, folks, great to have you on board today. Uh, if you've just missed some of this, then I shall catch up with you later and you'll be able to catch up with the beginning of this later because I'll post it in the group as a recording. Take care of yourselves, folks, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye for now.